All right, everyone. So in this video, we're going to work out this problem where we're going to find the absolute maximum and minimum values of this function. This is a two variable function on the triangular region in the first quadrant bounded by these curves. So we have x equals zero, y equals zero, and y equals nine minus x. Now I'm going to share a steps that you're going to follow when you're looking for absolute max and min of a function. So here are the steps that I think will be useful for you to kind of run through as you're working through problems like this. So for the first, uh, for, for, for this problem, we're going to first find the critical point. So once you find out the critical points that are in the region, then we're going to test the function or evaluate the function at those points. And we'll hold on to that value. Then we're going to find all the boundary points of this region and then evaluate F at those points and see if there's any critical points also on the boundary. Once we have done that, we're going to use our answer from step one and step two and compare the function values. So whichever is the lowest value, that's our absolute minimum. And the highest value will of course be our absolute maximum. So let's get started, see how this is going to be done. So first, let's find our critical points. So I'll take the function and find its partial derivative respect to x and y. So let's go ahead and just put that right here. So we have easy access to our formula. Here's f of x. And let's go ahead and find the region. Uh, we're going to sketch the region. So here's our x, y. And we have that triangular region. Uh, x equals zero, y equals zero, and y equals nine minus x. So x equals zero will give us uh, this line right here, the entire line, but y equals zero will give us this entire line right here. And then nine minus x will give us, if so for the curve y equals nine minus x, if I set x equals zero, I have a y-intercept here at nine. And if I set, um, y equals zero, I have an x-intercept right here, nine. And we connect them, make a line. So this is the curve y equals nine minus x. So this is the region. We're looking at this interior region, and that will be the region R, where we're going to find our absolute maximum and minimum value of this function f of x, y. So this is our region R. So how many boundaries we got? Well, we have three of them. This region is consists of three boundaries. So we have one right here, one right here, and one right here. So let's label them. Let's call um this boundary C1. So C1 will be when X is equal to zero. C2 will be when Y is equal to zero. And C3 will be when Y is equal to nine minus X. All right, so let's hold on to that. So let's go ahead and find our critical points. So for critical points, we're going to find partial derivative of f. So f sub x, so take partial respect to x, you're going to get two minus two x, and then we set it to zero, which will give us x equals one. And then we take the partial of f respect to y, that's gonna give us four minus two y, we set it to zero, and that will give us y is equal to two. So we have a critical point in the interior of the region. So let's plot that. So we have one comma two. So when X is one, let's suppose this is one and Y is two, maybe up there. Let's just call this. So that's the point one comma two. Now, if you find a critical point that's not within the region you're looking at, you can kind of omit those critical points. Here, this is inside our region, so we're good to evaluate the function at that point. So let's find f at one comma two. So plug these into the original function. You have two plus two times one plus four times y, y is gonna be two minus one squared. And then, um, and then we're going to um, do minus y squared, y is two, so two squared. So I plug that point x comma y into this function, that's our original function. And this will give you seven. So after doing the calculation, you'll see you'll get seven. Seven is the value at f of one comma two. 
All right, so that's step number one. Now step number two is to look around the boundaries. So we have boundary points. We have this one right here. Uh, when X is zero, Y is nine. We also have this one, the intersection of those two lines and this one too. Now we're gonna go along the boundary. So along C1, so now let's look at the boundaries. So along C1, we're setting X equals zero. So our function, becomes um, f of zero comma y. So x is zero, y is y. So we're gonna call this a different function. Let's call it g of y. And then we're gonna test along the interval. So along C, uh, C1, our y is gonna range from zero to nine. So that's the boundary we're going to test. Now let's write down what this function becomes. So when x is zero, we're going to have two, plus 4y minus y squared. So it's a function of y. Now we're going to see what are the critical points of this function along this boundary. And we're also gonna test the boundary point zero, nine. So this is similar to a uh, single variable calculus uh, finding absolute maximum and minimum using the closed interval method. So I'll leave the link in the description box for you to check it out how that works. So let's continue. So we have um, g of y, let's take the derivative of g. So g prime of y, that's gonna give us two, um, no, so I'm taking the derivative. So derivative of two is gonna be zero. So this will be four minus two y, and then we set it equal to zero. So that's gonna give us y is equal to two. So y is equal to two along this boundary, and we know x is equal to zero. So we do have a critical, point along this boundary. Let's uh, plot that. So zero, two, so perhaps right here, that's a critical point along that boundary. And we need to say what our function is at that point. And we're also gonna evaluate the function at these points. So three points to evaluate the function. So let's find f at zero, zero, and then f at um, zero, two, because that's the one we just found and then f at zero, nine. So that's on the boundary. So when you plug in zero into the original function, so I'm gonna try to put the original function on the bottom so we have easy access to it. So here's the original function. Um, okay. So um, now you could use that or you could use this one right here because x is zero anyway. So it's, it's the same formula really. But if you go back to the original, you'll eventually get uh, two plus x is zero. So plus four times y, y is also zero in this case. So I'm just gonna write uh, nothing on the next term. And then, uh, so that everything else is gonna be zero because we're looking at zero, zero. So f of zero is just two. All right, so that's one of our function value. Let's hold on to that. Now, when x is zero, y is two, we're going to get two plus four times y, so that's four times two minus X is zero, zero squared, and then y, is y squared. So you're going to have two squared. And this is going to evaluate to six. All right, so we have another function value at that point. And at zero, nine, our function value is gonna be, again, two plus four times nine minus nine squared. And that's gonna give us negative 43. So we got these function values along this boundary. Now let's test the next boundary. So hold on to these numbers and keep going. So next we're gonna test C2. So what do we got along uh, path C2? So C2 is this one right here, when y is zero, x can go from zero to nine. So for C2, we're going to use y is equal to zero, and we know x can go from zero to nine. So if y is zero, plugging that into our original function right here, we're going to get a function of x. So you'll have, so f of x comma nine, sorry, x comma zero, because y is zero. It's gonna give us a function of x. So we have two plus two x, y is zero, so that's minus x squared. So that's what it comes down to. And now we're gonna go ahead and take the derivative and do the usual and test along the boundary. Now we already tested along the boundary zero and um, zero. So we just need to test nine and see if there's any critical 
point along this path. So then g prime of x is equal to 2 minus 2x, set it to 0, and that's going to give you x equal 1. All right, so we do have a critical point. When x equal 1, y is 0. So that point, it's going to be right here. So there is a critical point right here. So we need to test that point into our function. We don't need to test this because we already did that. And we need to test that one because that's a boundary point. So let's check this out. So we have f evaluated at 0, 0. We already did. So no need to do that again. So now we have 1, 0. And also we have 9, 0. So we're going to test the boundary. So this will give us the following. So plug this into the original. Again, let's uh, start pulling the original down here so we don't have to keep sliding up and down. Here you go. Now, like I said, you can put it, all of this back to the original or you can use this. This is the same thing when y is zero. So we got um, two plus two times one, that's two, and then minus one squared. So that's what we get when we plug in um, one into the function, and this is going to give us three. So our function value at this point is three. And then for nine comma zero, we're going to get two plus two times nine minus nine squared. Again, y is zero. So this is equal to negative 61. All right, so this is another function value. Okay, so we're almost done. Now we just need to test along our last curve, which was C3. Now C3 is this path right here. So it's this line. So we, we already tested these endpoints. So we just wanna know if there is any critical points along that path. So we already done a lot of the work for that path. So C3 is when Y is equal to nine minus X. So again, we're testing this from between zero to nine for X. So um, our function f of x and y is replaced with 9 minus x becomes a function of single variable x. And let's call that g of x. So this is going to be 2 plus 2 times x plus 4 times y. Well, y is replaced with 9 minus x and then minus x squared minus y squared. Y is 9 minus x squared. I simply replace... Um, this into my original in place of y. And then you simplify this. So expand a little bit. So g of x, before taking the derivative, it's going to be 2 plus 2x plus 36 minus 4x minus x squared. So a little bit of distribution minus, um, so 81 minus 81, and then plus um, 18x minus x squared. All right, so that's what I go and I expand. And then by combining like terms, my function simplifies to 43 plus 16x minus 2x squared. Now we can take the derivative of this so to find critical points. So I take the derivative, I get 16 minus 4x, and then I'm going to go ahead and set this equal to zero. So this is going to give me x is equal to four. All right, so I do have a critical point along that line. So when x is four, well, what is y? Well, y is right here. So it's along that path. So y is going to be nine minus x. So that would be five. So we have a critical point on this interval. Along this path, we have x is four, y is five. So we have to test that on the function. So 4 comma 5, well, you will find that somewhere right here. So 4, let's suppose uh, 4 is right here, and then 5 will probably be on the... So I'm going to try to make 4 right here. So 4 is there, maybe 5 is right here. So that's the critical point, 4 comma 5. So it's along that path. Now let's see what the function value is at that point so we plug it to the original equation so we have um again where is our original equation let's find it that's right here i'm just going to put it down here so it's easy for us to see where we're plugging in so we got two plus two times four plus uh four times five minus x squared so that's 
four squared. And then that's going to give me um, 16 and then minus five squared. All right, so that's the setup. And then after you calculate, you're going to get, this is two plus eight plus 20 minus 16 minus 25. This will give you a negative 11. Okay, so we have done everything. Now we just need to decide which is the highest function value and the lowest. So um, let's kind of put them together so you can see them. So first we found was our critical point. So that was this one right here. So f of one comma two, we got seven. So I'm just gonna organize them and make a list. So we got that one. Then we tested along C1. So along C1, we got three of them. So we have these two and also f of zero comma nine. So let me just copy that, put it down here for you. There you go. So we have another one along C1. That's this one right here. And then along C2, we found um, these two. So these two were along C2. And then now the last path we found along C3, there is only one. So we didn't need to do zero and nine again because they will give us the same point. So C3, we only got this one right here. So I'll just copy this part. Okay, so here are all the points that we computed. So uh, now we compare them and see which one is the highest, which one is the lowest. So by looking at this list, it looks like we have a maximum right here. So an absolute max at one comma two happens to be seven and minimum is right here. So our absolute minimum, it occurs at nine comma zero which is negative 61. So you see that our, if you look at the region, our maximum occurs right here and our minimum occurs uh, at this point, nine comma zero, this one. Alrighty, I hope this helped you understand this topic. Take care, bye.